Hello everyone, Joey Riz here coming to you with another video. Yes, in front of me I have the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X. This is the top of the line chip that's currently available from the new Ryzen 3000 line. I've seen plenty of videos of people pairing this with the X570, but I want to see the upgrade path. What if you have an X470 board? Will it play nice? Let's check it out. Alright, so I'm sure you've probably seen a whole bunch of uh, Ryzen 9, Ryzen 7 unboxings by now for the 3000 series, but I haven't, so let's just open it up. 12 cores, 24 threads, 3900X, 70 megabytes of L3 cache, that's kind of sick. It comes with a fan, I think it's the Wraith Prism, but let's actually see. Okay, Ryzen 9, 3900X, with the new sticker for Ryzen 9, very nice, that's going to go nicely on my system. Let's actually see what, uh, what cooler we have in here. Right. Okay. Okay. It is the same one. It's the Wraith Prism. Uh, same one that came on a 2700RX. I'm not going to use this because I have a CLC 280 from EVGA. Works really good. Let's throw it in. All right. Welcome back here. Uh, chip is installed. It booted right up. No problems. It is sitting right underneath my uh, 280 CLC from EVGA to keep it nice and cool. X470 Tai Chi, as I said, 3.43, um, Ryzen 3900X, 12 core processor, that's really nice to see, 64 gigabytes of L3 cache, that's awesome, 3200 is what I'm running my memory at, I'll show you over here, I'm just running XMP for right now because I'll do memory tweaking later, but this is nice and solid for the current uh, setup here, only other thing I did was I put this in overclock mode, everything's on auto except for I actually undervolted by one millivolt so actually just to save a little bit on heat because the thing does work rather well even with that setting um and nice enough to see that with this new chip it actually runs better than the 2700x because i'm actually able to set precision boost overdrive in the bios and have it work right away which is amazing so let's just get right into it um as you see running over here and again 3900x these are what my cores are doing right now the top cores, like the CCD, the one of the chiplets, goes all the way up to 4.6, 4.65 uh, gigahertz, you know, just, you know, on single core. And actually, triple core does that with, like, lighter loads. The other CCD only maxes out about 4.2. I'm guessing that there's, like, a... There's a high performance one and a low performance one. I guess that's for yields, so that's what they're doing. So let's actually just go in and put a load on it. This is just, you know, Cinebench R15, but... uh. Let's check out what it does. Nice. With the Precision Boost Overdrive, everything there, everything turned on. 4.125, 4.15, it kind of bounced between, but that's all cores on all of the cores on this CPU. So, very, very nice. And as you can see, I'm getting a 31A6. My top was 3230, which is almost double what I got from the Ryzen 2700X. And that's just with four more threads, but also that... IPC is 15% better and so we're getting better overall like everywhere and as I said before these are the these are the precision boost overdrive settings that I have advanced you disable the limits auto auto and to enable uh, boost clock override so that's what's happening with this current setup but things get even more interesting when you turn off one of these CCDs let's try it okay so we're back in the system only making one change in the BIOS but as you can see it's done quite a bit like I said, I was disabling one of the chiplets. The lower performing chiplet is now off the CCD, so we're running on CCD1. Six cores, 12 threads here, so just a little different. Um, as you can see, uh, I'll show you how I made that change here. You have to. It's really deep in the BIOS, but you can do it. Uh, advanced, a, a, AMD, CBC, Valhalla, common options, CCD core, and then accept, and you can get to this thing. CCD control, chiplet control, you'll turn off one of the chiplets, so it's only running on one CCD. So that's actually the performance one, like I said. You can do this in... Um, Ryzen Master, but I've been having a problem with Ryzen Master. I think it needs an update for the newer processor still. It's just not running solid. But as you can see, we're still hitting 4.6, 4.65 on these cores, you know, for single thread, you know, a few threads, you know, light loads. It's still doing that. But let's just ha see what happens when you put a full load on it on all the cores and all the threads. Check that out. 4.4, 4.375, sustained all core, 
all threads running at that high gigahertz on its own. And this is, remember, this I'm undervolting by one millivolt, so I'm actually pulling less power, and it's just doing it all on its own. This is the BIOS, this is the, you know, Ryzen chip overclocking itself without an issue. It works rather well. And like you said, look, see the see the, the temperatures? Let's run it once more. I'll, I'll hot lap it. Temperatures staying at 55 degrees. That's kind of insane. I really am looking forward to what Ryzen is doing here. Uh, if they can have this one chiplet. Remember with the 2700X, you're only able to get to like 4.1, you know, when you, when you used to do precision boost overdrive. This is a six core chiplet running at 4.4, 4.375, sustained. And uh, yeah, um, this is amazing. This is running on the X470 still, so I'm not even sure if we can get it to run better on X570, but this is this has all the heavy duty VRMs, so it's getting all the power it needs. And to tell you the truth, ASRock hit it out of the park with this uh, BIOS update because it works better on this than it did on the 2700X. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, Get subscribed down below because I have some really cool stuff coming. I have another video coming right after this one. All right, this is Joey Riz. See you later.